Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. Bengaluru-based agri-tech startup Cropin has secured pre-series D funding from two unnamed tech companies that have made strategic investments in the startup. Speaking exclusively to Jute Sanit, Cropin's founder and CEO, Krishna Kumar, says that the company will close its next funding round of 50 to $70 million in six months. He added that the company's cloud-based scale-up plans allow it to make predica predictions for every farm on the planet in three years' time. Take a look. This industry is going to be powered by Knowledge Graph. And uh, knowledge graph, without Knowledge Graph on the crop, AI doesn't make sense. It will not bring the context out. Uh, we are in 92 countries today. We manage around 500 different crops, 10,000 varieties of those crops. So we have a data from every mm -hmm. possible you know, uh, 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 continent, uh, different uh, geographic, geographies or... Uh, uh, climatic conditions. So does this unified approach means that you can scale up business? And if yes, yeah. to what level? Yeah. So, so with with this, all these data data sets coming together, will give you a power to build uh, build intelligence on every farm on the planet mm -hmm. and scale that out, mm -hmm. right? So, if you if your models are learning from, let's say, potato in the farm, uh, potato in India or certain varieties, but there are also farms of potato uh, from Africa or different part of the world. There's a transfer learning happening. Mm -hmm. Now, the same model can be deployed for all potato across the globe now. Mm -hmm. And it will give you a consistent output, mm -hmm. right? And that is all powered by the knowledge graph. Because if you don't understand the crop and the variety and the location, how they interact, mm -hmm. and how, uh, how, why they are different, uh, behaving differently in different uh, climatic conditions or soil type or different countries, you will not able to, the models are not able to give you a right, right output, right? So right. I think uh, this, this scale, is helping us to uh, uh, build solution at the uh, uh, to build the intelligence at the country country level, and we have been demonstrated that in more than 13 countries on 32 right. different commodities today. Mm -hmm. We computed around 0 0.2 billion hectare of intelligence for our customers till date. Mm -hmm. All right, and till date 0 0.2 billion hectares. What are the scale up plans going forward, and how fast will they come? So we are expecting uh, to have a representation uh, of 5% of the global ground up data on our platform, which gives us ability to predict every farm on the planet. Mm -hmm. if, you know, every inch will be covered. And, uh, and, and that can happen in the next three years. Okay. Right? So I, it's not very far. We are today computing Nigeria, Bangladesh, mm -hmm. India, mm -hmm. in LATAM at the country scale. Mm -hmm. We are not we are talking about a district or a province, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and making sense for our customers, mm -hmm. solving for you know, uh, you know, uh, deforestation use case or climate change mm -hmm. use cases or carbon use cases or supply chain traceability or intelligence on the crop like yield or pest and disease. Mm -hmm. uh, we can tell you right now uh, that this is a coffee farm and next 15 days there's a blo uh, block uh, pot disease can happen and then how this is how you treat it. Right. And you can do it in advance and the, imagine the impact the farmer can have. And three years of course is an ambitious target no doubt. How is this partnership with AWS helping you actually go about scaling up and getting to the numbers that you want to get to? Uh, we have a deep partnership with AWS. We are doing uh, petabytes of compute on their infrastructure using their workloads. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using a lot of Lego blo blocks uh, like uh, you know, Lambda Functions and uh, Aurora, uh, Redshift, uh, uh, SageMakers. Mm -hmm. uh, our company lab is using extensively to build this model and scale out. Today, the 92 we service 92 countries. Mm -hmm. we, we have 30 million uh, acres of land digitized and we have to scale out this solution. Mm -hmm. It's all possible because of uh, we are on the cloud, mm -hmm. AWS Cloud, right? And, uh, computing at the country scale and refreshing it, let's say building a capability to refresh it uh, within two days or three days or a week's time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are able to do that Absolutely. with this uh, scale out solutions. Right. Let's come to your revenues. You've grown at a rate of 2.5x, I think, in the last mm -hmm. couple of years uh, with an ARR of between 15 mm -hmm. to 25 million. That's the number that I read. Uh, what are your projections in terms of your outlook? Where do you hope to go from here on the revenue front? So I think we are good on the uh, you know target which we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we sh we should be able to meet our uh, targeted number given to the uh, uh, to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's uh, the we, number? <laughs> <laughs> so we will uh, we are uh, we are not going to tell you that number. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we should uh, we are we should hit our two x number this okay. year. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, we are very uh, positive about that. So growth at two x is what you're projecting and what you'll get to. Funding. Uh, three rounds are already over. I think between 33 to 34 million is what you've secured mm -hmm. in the first three rounds, seed round included. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's pre-series D funding in the running and that you are talking to two companies. Mm -hmm. uh, any, uh, you know, any uh, insight on that and how it's been progressing so far? So uh, it's progressing. I think we uh, almost closed uh, that transaction. Uh, uh, while you're speaking, we are also putting the signatures. 
uh, but it's back to the series D and we are going live uh, in Jan mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are already talking to some, some of the investors they have already have interest mm -hmm. yeah and we are tr uh, we'll see if we can close it within the next six months right yeah. Uh, moving forward, the Series D round itself, I know that you've said 50 to $70 million is what you are targeting, and this includes the pre-Series D round also. Where will these funds be deployed once you hope to close out the round, if I'm not mistaken, in April or May, right? First mm -hmm. half of 2023. Where will these funds be deployed? So, uh, it's, it's going to be deployed for our expansion plan. Mm -hmm. So, we just opened our U.S. office in Delaware, and we hired people in California. Mm -hmm. We are starting our uh, operations in uh, uh, Europe. Uh, we have uh, so we are beefing up the team mm -hmm. uh, because we work with the large enterprises and it requires a new capability to be built mm -hmm. within the organization to service them mm -hmm. at the same time we we are investing in our crop in ai lab and platform capability because we are talking about you know petabytes of data compute mm -hmm. and scale out those solutions at the country level uh, mm -hmm. and uh, makes uh, uh, and that that requires a uh, quite an investment mm -hmm. because these are expensive uh, uh, teams to run mm -hmm. Uh, expensive to run the computes mm -hmm. and that's where uh, we partner with AWS as well to how do we bring down our cost mm -hmm. still scale out and uh, they have been very uh, supportive of that as well and with that it's a wrap of this edition of startup street more news and updates coming up on the other side stay tuned